As a child, I lived in the countryside for a while and heard many ghost stories. I myself had seen ghosts a few times. However, I couldn't say I had seen ghosts with anyone because it was still very mysterious to me. In my days of going to elementary school, I once saw a ghost while crossing a small bridge. That day my friend and I were joking around, so we decided to go under the bridge. Here I experienced a rather strange phenomenon. There were three fourth grade girls there. One knelt on the ground and repeatedly slapped her cheek, and the other two stood aside with a somewhat worried look on their faces. I quickly went over to ask what they were performing. I also realized that the girl kneeling was Hen, living in the same neighborhood as myself. When I saw it clearly I realized that these girls weren't joking. Hen's cheeks were slapped until puffy and her face black. I found it strange that anyone would beat themselves so cruelly. The other two girlfriends were dumbfounded, did not act and did not intervene, which made me curious. It turned out they couldn't stop. It was like people who were glued to the ground. Seeing that I walked over and pulled Hen up. But it seemed that the girl was very strong, even stronger than an adult. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't pull her up. I often heard stories about being possessed by demons. So I knew this girl was not fine. I quickly ran to the girl's house to ask for help. I told her parents about what happened. Likewise, after her parents arrived, they couldn't stop Hen from slapping herself, so the mother asked the rest of them what happened. The girls both cried and sniffled. In that late afternoon when the children were walking together, Hen wanted to take a break. She went to a lawn by the embankment for convenience. The other two girls did not feel anything, and after waiting for a while, Hen went out. But ever since Hen returned from the lawn, she kept her head down without saying a word. After walking a few steps, the girl suddenly fell to the ground with a strong thud. Then she started slapping herself. The two of her friends tried to stop it but couldn't and didn't understand why she was acting like that. The matter was clarified after Hen's mother returned to the village and found a woman with experience in exorcism in the countryside. She was a person who could exterminate demons. Although she was not a witch, she could also drive away demons. And when Hen arrived, the older woman was still holding a bowl. She walked up to Hen and suddenly threw water in her face. When the water spilled, I knew what kind of water was in the bowl. After that, Hen fell to the ground. Her parents took her home to rest for a week before going back to school. The older woman also warned us that under the bridge, there were a lot of unjust souls. If we ever got near that area, we should not speak any dirty words or act rudely, lest we be the same again. Someone said that in the past, on that spot, there was an untimely death. The man was a builder, but he was always drunk while working. That day he did not come back from work, but at night he slept on the pile of materials. The two other workers immediately came to shake him up and discovered that he was already dead. The reason for the death was being drunk. It sounded absurd, but it was true. He still held an empty bottle of wine in his hand and had no wounds on his body. The people in the village thought that the man died because of the wind. Seeing that this victim came from another place to live there temporarily without relatives, he was buried in the embankment field. There was no one to worship and clean the area so soon this tomb was overgrown with grass. The place where Hen went to the bathroom was the same place where the tomb was placed. There was another story also related to that tomb. That day, when I was doing my homework, my aunt ran over to ask if my father had seen her husband going anywhere. My father saw that my aunt was worried and he ran out to find her husband and I also followed curiously. We asked around the village if anyone had seen my uncle but to no avail. 
Then we ran to the little shop and they said that my uncle had bought a lot of alcohol and left the village. The strange thing was that my uncle was not a drinker at all. My father and aunt found the path leading to the tunnel from the owner's instructions. Normally when coming home from work, my uncle would never go this way, so no one thought that he would be there. And then we were all surprised to find him in that place. He was lying on the edge of the rock, seemingly drunk and unconscious. Next to him were a few bottles and dishes. My uncle was taken to the hospital for treatment. Fortunately, he was saved in time, so everyone was okay. But when people asked my uncle why he went to that place to drink, he did not know anything. But everyone understood that this story was related to the man who died while building the bridge. Up to now, that place had been reclaimed and repaired, and the tomb had been moved, so everything was peaceful. But these stories I still remembered vividly and used to scare the naughty or destructive children in the family and the neighborhood.